we'll just pick up the bits that I dropped on the beach and I'm just going to saute this very gently just to get it covered with the oil and just to get it started cooking and to make sure it's all broken up. Now this is a French soup, I think it comes from the Languedoc region, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm absolutely certain. It doesn't come from Provence anyway, I can tell you that. So it's not from the south of France, but I think, you know, it's one of those hearty things, and they, they change them a lot. Sometimes you use bacon bones. I've even made it with spare ribs, you know, but the American-style spare ribs. But here, I'm using the traditional smoked ham hock. I've got a couple of those, and we're just going to throw those in. Bury those a bit, because what I want to happen with these is I want these to cook, and then what I'll do is take them out, allow them to cool a bit, and then I just take off the flesh, get rid of the fat and the bones and things, take off the flesh, and, and add that back to the soup. Yeah, that's what I meant. And I'm now going to add a couple of litres of chicken stock. Now the important thing at this step, or at this stage, is to make sure that you cover that, because if you don't cover it, what's going to happen is that that ham hock's not going to cook. So make sure that that is well covered. Lift up some of those veggies, get it underneath. And just like that. Then we bring that to the boil, cover it, and we'll simmer that until that ham hock is very tender. I would say, oh, 20 to 30 minutes. Maybe, let's make it half an hour. Simmer it pretty gently until that's tender. Then we remove the ham hock. Then we start talking about adding some other veggies. Now, those hocks were pretty large, so actually I've cooked it for three quarters of an hour. Then I took the hocks out, allowed them to cool, and I've taken off the bones and obviously any of the fat and sinew, and I've just diced that. Also, I've got some veggies here which I'm in the middle of doing. Cabbage, take out any of the, the noticeable ribs, and I just, that's about a quarter of a cabbage and I just sliced it, but a nice green one like a Savoy cabbage, something like that. And also about half a cauliflower, which I'll just cut into pieces. Cut it like that so that they're nice and even. Cut out most of that stalk. See a piece like that? Cut that in half, be great. You don't want them too large. We'll just bring that liquid back up, so we'll turn that up high now. So I'll just do a bit of zucchini too, but I'll just mix that in, Rob, so just hang them out there for a minute. Now sometimes you might find you have to add a little bit more liquid at this stage. You see any big rooms like that? Grab them. But I, look, I think that's going to be alright, because as I said to you before, this is, this is stew type material. This is not, not the real soup, you know. Crusty bread on the side and away you go. Now some zucchini. A couple of those will be enough. And we'll just cut those into quarters. Now this is not a soup you blend, so therefore the veggies have to be vaguely neat. Throw that in as well. Once again, mix that in. Now what I'll also do is test the seasoning. You certainly won't need any salt because obviously what you've got is the smoked ham hock which is always going to be a bit salty. That is delicious. It really is. The combination of the ham hops cooking in the chicken stock and all those veggies have just given that the most delightful flavour. A little bit of pepper. But that's pretty optional because it could do with even out that. Now what we'll do now is cook that for about 10 minutes, then I'll return the ham hock. I don't want to put that in now because I'm boiling it a bit, and this only really needs to reheat very lightly. And what you've got is a great dish, you know, on a winter's evening. Can you imagine sitting around the fire, bowl of that, big chunk of bread? I don't know, do you, did your mother used to cut bread about that thing and call them doorstops? They were beautiful. That would be perfect with that soup.
for one housemate. Time is up. You decide who's leaving the Big Brother house. Call 1902 to vote out Mirabai. Or 1902 to vote out Kira. Or 1902 to vote out Sarah. Voting lines will close at o'clock Sunday. Plus, watch out for your chance to win a Pizza Hut Big Brother eviction holiday. You have the power. Make your vote count for Big Brother eviction. 7.30 Sunday on 10. You'll definitely buy better at Bilo. Two litre Coca-Cola and varieties. $1.57. Skin on chicken breast fillets. $7.47 a kilo. Bilo, extra value for you. And me. They're old enough to know better. Did they rape her? And too young to care. You know how freaky girls get sometimes. But who would kill to be popular? Are you calling our daughter a pervert? All new Law and Order. Why are you doing this to me? 8.30 tonight on 10. <laughs> Cookware in my kitchen has to stay in up to constant abuse. That's why I've developed a range of cookware that's functional, durable, affordable, and of course, the design is terribly important. Available exclusively at all Target stores. There's only one secret to making fried rice, or actually any stir-fry, in fact, is have your ingredients ready. Because it has to be done real fast, and it has to be done a la minute. Just like that. So we have everything done. What? Right? There actually is another secret to making fried rice. See, I'm a liar, aren't I? You have to cook the rice well. All I've done here is I have cooked a couple of cups of rice in lots of boiling salted water until it's just tender, then whip it out, drain it, run it under cold water, and leave it overnight. You can't cook fried rice with rice that you've just cooked. And I hate to say this, even in a Huey's <laughs> rice cooker, here he goes, but even in a Huey's kitchen rice cooker, it doesn't work. So you can't do it in your rice cooker. Sadly, I don't think it does. It makes a, you know, it's a different style of rice. We need it really separate. Anyway, now that I've done the little lecture for today, what I've got here is I've got some char siu pork, which is just that barbecue pork, pork you buy in Chinatown. I've also got a couple of spring onions, and I've got some Chinese sausage, which I'm just slicing. Now, this Chinese sausage I have poached first in some simmering water. You can steam it, if you like, instead. But do cook it first, please. So I've just got a couple there. Once again, you buy those at any Chinese grocer. I've got one clove of garlic, which I'm going to throw in here too. I'll just squeeze it over the top there. And I've also got some fresh ginger, which I'm just going to grate there. Alright, so we just grate some fresh ginger into there. Then we just put a wok on the flame. Get the wok fairly hot before you add the oil. That's another secret. That's three secrets. Well, I was the one who said there was only one. Right. Now I'm up to three. Ah, oh, well. What the heck? We'll get this hot, then we'll add a smidgen of olive oil, of olive oil, of peanut oil. We all know how much I like olive oil. This is a dish you need peanut oil for. Right. Let's just see. It's important that we don't add too much, because you don't want the dish too oily. You can always tell when you go to a restaurant and that they have an Asian chef in the kitchen. I'm not just talking about in Asian restaurants, I'm talking about any restaurant, because they cook at very fierce heats, and it always had that, has that flavour from the wok, you know, of a very hot wok and just a bit of oil. It's, it's an interesting flavour, and you can always tell the difference, whereas Europeans like me, we can't cook that hot, because when we cook that hot, everything burns. Well, maybe it's just me, but it always seems to, you know, you put your garlic and ginger and you turn around, the thing is absolutely black, whereas you watch them in an Asian restaurant, they're doing it about 5,000 miles an hour, it's perfect. Now I've waited, that's hot enough, now let's start thinking about it. That's why I was talking, you see, I was waiting for this to heat up. So, we throw all those in, remembering that what we've got there is some char siu pork, some Chinese sausage, spring onion, garlic and ginger. So we just stir that up fairly briefly. To that we then add, now you watch this Rob, because this could cause you a bit of grief. We add some soya sauce. And then we start thinking about throwing in this rice. 
and we just toss this really, really well. I find the wooden spoon's the easiest way to do it. Always have. But we just keep mixing it. Don't go away and answer the phone or anything. This is done immediately. And I'm also going to add some frozen peas. Just a few of those. Look, you can add any ingredients you like. I don't care. You can add some cooked chicken rather than the pork. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. But as I said, the main thing is to keep mixing it and make sure that you mix everything in together so that you've got all the flavours through it. Right, let's have a taste, see how I've been going. See if it needs a little bit more soy. You can always add that at the table. Not quite hot enough. Alright, that's looking good now. Let's just grab a bowl. This is, of course, an accompaniment that goes in the centre of the table with the 900 other dishes that you've done. But as I said, this is the one that you make sure you cook a la minute. Just like that. Now, if you wanted, you could also add some sliced spring onion on the top. But I'm just going to have another try of it because I reckon this is pretty good. Housemates are killing time creatively. We'd like to um, clean the house from head to toe. Just what does Big Brother have up his sleeve? Find out 7 o'clock tonight on 10. The aircraft involved was at 7.37. When it veered off the plowing into the water, nose first. A policeman knows lost his wife. A politician knows lost a husband. Two people with nothing in common. Are you investigating something? Except a mystery. Classic strudel, you know, the phyllo pastry rolled up with a nice apple filling in the middle. Well, we're not going to make that today. We're going to make a strudel, but what we're going to fill it with is some ricotta cheese, some, some chocolate, just some chopped up chocolate, a little bit of orange zest, and some sugar to sweeten it. And I think it's quite an interesting variation on the classic strudel. So, I've got about 250 grams or so of that firm ricotta cheese that you can get at the supermarket. To that, we're just going to put a couple of good pinches of some orange zest, probably about half an orange, and about 100 grams or so. Just some cooking chocolate that I've just chopped up here, just roughly. Chocolate in this is great because what happens when you bake it is it starts to melt, so you get this lovely melted chocolate texture all the way through that ricotta. We're just going to put it's about 75 grams of caster sugar there. And we'll just start to work that. It'll just take a minute or two, just so it starts to get a little bit smoother. Okay, that's fine. We'll just leave that up the front here for a sec. I've just got some unsalted melted butter there, probably about 100, 120 grams. Right. We're just going to lay our, our tray down here. If you don't have a non-stick tray like I'm using today, make sure you spray it. It's some pure and simple. And we're just going to start with our layers of phyllo. So, let's just start with the first one here. Now some of it's going to hang over the front here. That's okay because when we go to roll it up at the end, it will come back in. So I'm just gonna just a light brushing with some butter. Not 
too much because we're actually going to use about uh, 10 layers here and if you start putting too much butter on we're going to have a problem with being too rich at the end, there'll be too much butter and we are using ricotta cheese which is once it's been flavoured is quite, quite rich itself so that's about enough, you can see that lightly brushed, lightly brushed Just go on with our next sheet straight over the top make sure you're covering your phyllo with the damp tea towel, it will dry out start to crack Believe me, it's hard enough to work with without it drying out on you. Now I'm just going to continue that, brushing each, each layer, uh, until we reach 12 layers, at which point I'll show you how to fill it and bake it. Cookware in my kitchen has to stand up to constant abuse. That's why I've developed a range of cookware that's functional, durable, affordable, and of course, the design is terribly important. Available exclusively at all Target stores. Alright, here we go. Put our sheets done there. One last one. Drawn. Over the top here. So, let's get our ricotta mix. What we're going to have to do, excuse the hands, I'm just going to shape it and start. You can see how I've, I've used the spoon there to, to get a nice portion. We're just going to start feeding it along there. All right, I think that that'll be enough. So we've got a bit left home to be here, but that's all right. All right, now a folding process. We're just going to brush the edges of that last sheet that we put on. You'll notice that I didn't brush the whole whole sheet. Just go about the width of the pastry brush and you can see there all the way along on the borders okay now we'll start by just folding that that edge over
going to let that come up to the boil. We'll dissolve just a little bit of caster sugar in there. Boil it down so it starts to become a bit syrupy. And then we'll just put a dash of cream in there to finish it. And then we'll check the strudel. All right, the sauce has reached the consistency I'm looking for. Just a light coating. Turn that off. And I think the strudel will be ready. Let's have a look. Lovely golden brown colour I'm talking about. You can hear that nice and crisp. Fantastic. Just what we're looking for. Now we'll need to let that just sit and relax, cool a little bit, say for about 10 minutes or so. Slice it. That chocolate will start to melt inside, which is beautiful. Serve it with some of that sauce. And there you have the orange chocolate and ricotta strudel. Now, if you'd like any recipes from today's show, call us on 1902 211963. Or for more of my recipes, visit the Bilo or Newmart websites on www.bilo.com.au or www.newmart.com.au. Cheers. Well, I think that's about all for today. Bye. Sunday, two people with nothing in common except a mystery that sets change everything. Don't miss Harrison Ford and Kristen Scott Thomas in the network premiere. Random Hearts, 8.30 Sunday. Next, 10 News. Supermarkets and Morrow Olive Oil.